Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and the folks from LG sent along their new flagship Android phone. This is the G4. We're going to step through some of the features right now. Uh, the first thing you notice, of course, is the huge screen on it. This is a five and a half inch screen. Uh, really, really nice, actually. It's IPS, so you've got really decent viewing angles on it. Sometimes it almost looks like things are just kind of painted on. Uh, 2560 by 1440, that is a quad HD display uh, at 534 pixels per inch. And what that means is that things look really sharp. You don't see any pixelization or anything like that. Uh, really just a uh, beautiful thing to look at here. Very nice to read things uh, on the screen. It's got a Snapdragon 808 at 1.8 gigahertz uh, with three gigabytes of RAM. That means that it's very snappy in its performance. So we can just pop into Chrome here as an example. You can see how fast uh, things come up. I can click on an article here and it just really flies right open. It supports wireless AC. That's what we're using here in my house right now. So it uh, supports the latest wireless technologies. Very, very fast and very responsive for uh, reading and other things. So nice big screen, uh, really nice to read on too. Uh, it does support SD cards, so you can actually uh, pop open the back of the uh, case here, and I'll show you how that works. And you just, uh, there's a little notch here on the side, and we can pop this open here and uh, take off the back of the phone. You'll notice that the battery is removable, uh, and you can put an SD card in here for uh, storing images, and that's because the camera on here has got a pretty, a pretty big amount of resolution on it. It's a 16 megapixel camera, uh, which means that it takes pretty large photos, so you may want to get that SD card uh, and pop it in here to store photos on it when you're taking pictures. It also has a very wide aperture on that lens. And what that means is that it's better at, at kind of low light photography too. So I've seen, uh, you know, I've been playing with the camera quite a bit because this is kind of like their primary feature that they're really pushing on it. And I have to say it is very, very close in quality to the iPhone 6, which uh, some of you may disagree, but I think the iPhone 6 has really got the camera to beat uh, in the smartphone market. This one gets the closest that I have seen, and they've got a great camera app that we're going to step through uh, in a few minutes with that. So pretty easy to get at. Uh, all of the controls here are on the back, so you can turn it on and off with the uh, button here, and the volume rockers are there as well. Uh, what's interesting too is that the front camera on here is 8 megapixels. You can do 1080p video uh, on the front camera. You can also record 4K video on the back camera. So it's got a lot of uh, good uh, image capturing capabilities, especially for doing selfies because you're going to get an uh, 8 megapixel camera uh, right up front for taking those pictures. So pretty cool stuff. So what we're going to do now is uh, kind of step through some of the features of the phone, look at some performance, uh, some gaming performance in particular, and then look at some of the image quality and compare it with the iPhone. All right, the first thing I want to show you is the Sega Dreamcast emulator called Recast. And uh, I like to run emulators when testing the performance of phones because uh, this is, em emulator in particular is very demanding. It's, you know, it's really uh, trying to do a lot of stuff with both the graphics as well as uh, the processors. And it gives you a good idea as to what this phone is capable of doing. And as you can see here, we're running uh, this uh, opening screen from Virtua Tennis at almost six, over 60 frames per second. So it's pretty much running at full speed on here. And it looks really nice as well. And this is a kind of a good indicator as to uh, what the phone is capable of, just given that uh, emulation is such a hard thing to do on a smartphone, especially something like uh, doing the Dreamcast emulation. So I was very impressed with uh, how all that came together. It does slow down in spots, but uh, overall, even when playing the game, uh, it really functions quite nicely there too. So I'm very impressed to see uh, how well that runs, and that's always a good sign for me. Another thing that I also tried was the uh, Dolphin emulator. This one's going to kill it a little bit more, but this is uh, a GameCube emulator, so a more modern game console, and I uh, just wanted to see if Wave Race could even get to the title screen. Most of the, the Android devices I test on, we look at postage stamps, and it's certainly not very, very playable. I tried to play a game on it before, but um, it, it is able to get to the boot up screen here. Uh, it gets really slow when you get into gameplay, but we're getting there now where these phones are getting as fast, almost as fast as some of the PCs that we try to run this stuff on. So we're seeing uh, some better improvements uh, overall with that. Now, one thing that was interesting though, when I ran the 3D Mark benchmark, this is the older benchmark. They have a new one out now that completely kills everything you run against it. But uh, the current older benchmark uh, is uh, running at 18,646, uh, which actually puts it below some of the other uh, premium phones out in the market like the Droid Turbo and the Moto X. And it looks like it comes down to the physics frame rate, which is more processor intensive. Uh, it is able to keep up graphically with those other platforms. So I think it's more a function of the processor that they've chosen for the device. But you know, for most of what you're going to do with an Android related to gaming, uh, this is going to be just as good as just about any of the other phones out there given uh, what it has for horsepower. So I'm very impressed with its overall power, a little bit below on the benchmarks from some of the other phones out there. But uh, you saw how nicely it was running that Dreamcast emulator. And I think if you are a gamer, especially an emulator gamer, <laughs> you're going to enjoy uh, playing those games on here. So let's get to the camera now and see how that functions.
Now, I want to spend some time, and I apologize for saying this, focusing on the camera because this is one of the key uh, things that they're marketing as a primary feature of this device. So this is a, a 16 megapixel camera, but I think what's most unique about it uh, is the app that they've wrapped around it. So you have a lot of control over things. So right now we're in the auto mode, which is not uh, as detailed. And you can, of course, do the tap to uh, focus. I can also double tap on the screen to take a picture. I can also say uh, cheese and it will take a picture based on a few keywords also, which is pretty handy for uh, taking low light shots or things where you have the camera uh, mounted somewhere where you don't want, you don't, you're not able to actually uh, touch it physically. So it's kind of neat. You can do remote uh, operations without the remote. Uh, but what's really neat is what happens when you get into manual mode. And this is where it gets really interesting to me. So you'll see now that the image just got totally washed out uh, because I have such a low shutter speed uh, set up here. But you can adjust a lot of fine details on here, very similar to what you can do on a digital SLR, which I was really impressed to see. So right now I'm adjusting my shutter speed a little bit faster so that now we're able to uh, get a better image here so we're not all overexposed. There is a light meter up here, so you wanna try to get that little uh, arrow as close to the zero as possible. Uh, right now I am in, I believe, let's see ISO I'm at. I'm at 1500 ISO, which means that I have it at a very uh, sensitive setting. So there's going to be more noise in the picture. So I can turn down uh, the ISO to make it less sensitive and less noisy. So I can go down maybe to 200 and then you'll see that the uh, picture is darker. So I need to reduce my shutter speed in order to get uh, the image back to where we can actually see something. So it's actually Actually a good way to learn photography if you really want to get into exposure uh, this will give you a real-time feedback as to uh, what settings need to be set in order to get your picture the way you want it to get uh, and if I had this when I was a kid learning photography versus having to take pictures and run back to the photo lab uh, and, and spend a lot of money to figure it out it'd be nice to have had this real-time response to it uh, there's also a histogram up here which gives you an idea as to uh, how your exposure levels are overall so if you're uh, a photographer by any uh, in any kind of uh, ability level uh, you're going to see a lot of familiar things here, which would, would it be nice actually to start seeing on a uh, digital SLR camera. So pretty cool there. The one thing you can adjust though is the aperture. It is locked at 1.8. Uh, so that will at least introduce some limitations to you, but you can do some cool stuff. So I, I did some long exposures. You can go up to 30 second exposures on it. Uh, so I was tweaking the ISO, the sensitivity, as well as uh, the, uh, the, the shutter speed. And I was taking pictures like this last night. I just put the uh, camera down on the ground and pointed it up uh, and then used the voice command to set it off. And it was doing these really cool uh, photos here last night. So you can see it gets noisier when you turn the ISO up. So I, I think this was probably at uh, 200 or 400 as this was a 30 second exposure because you can see the stars kind of moving there uh, they move because the earth is moving incidentally uh, this is a uh, shorter exposure with a higher sensitivity so you can see there's a lot more noise here but I did pick up it looks like a shooting star here in the process which was really cool so there's a, a lot you can do with this it might be fun just if you're out camping or something you can learn a little bit about nighttime photography and maybe how to do some astrophotography you're never going to get as good as you would on a real SLR I've got a video I'll link above to uh, some shots that I took here in Connecticut after the hurricane when everybody's power was out we had great dark skies and it was really cool so you can check that out and get a feel for uh, what you can do once you learn the basics perhaps with a phone like this uh, this is probably a better example of a lower light picture so this was taken uh, inside my home these are sometimes shots that get really grainy and noisy uh, on a uh, traditional camera and as you can see the uh, the image quality is pretty good I'll zoom in here a little bit and you can get a feel for um, just how uh, sharp it is. So I was very impressed with it. I think it's uh, close to what you would see uh, on an iPhone for sure. I'll give you another image here, which is a comparative between the two. So on the left is the iPhone uh, in auto, auto mode. This is the LG in manual. Uh, so the contrast is a little bit off on it, but I think you could adjust that uh, when you get into your Photoshop or post-production. So the image quality is good. It's got a nice bokeh, as you can see here, the kind of the blurred out background. Um, the image quality I still think is a little bit better on the iPhone, I have to say, just from you know how it's processing the image, but uh, it's definitely getting there. What's also interesting about the camera is that uh, it shoots in RAW. So if you've ever used a digital SLR, that's the best way to shoot photographs. The files are huge, but you're getting uh, really what the camera was seeing, and then you're able to interpret those things in software. Uh, what was interesting was when I pulled it up in Photoshop, uh, this is that same exact image you just saw because I shot a, it'll shoot RAW and JPEG simultaneously. Uh, look how noisy the image is here. It's really interesting that uh, the raw image is so noisy versus what the, uh, the JPEG uh, version is. And that's because uh, the camera is, or the, the phone is actually doing a lot of interpretation on the image. So I'm just going to open it up without uh, doing anything to the image initially here so you can get a feel for uh, what it looks like as, the, as a raw image coming out of the camera. So it is a bit noisy, which was really interesting. So you're going to have to do a lot more work uh, on the raw images than you might on an SLR. So it's nice to have that 
uh, but I think if you really want to get the images close to uh, what the camera will spit out automatically in its JPEG mode, you might need to do a little bit more work there. But uh, to have all this on a smartphone, I think is awesome. And I'd love to see, uh, maybe play with this a little bit more as I'm uh, getting more experience with the phone to see how I can use this uh, better as a camera. My only gripe again is the fact that you can't adjust the aperture. So if you could do that, uh, you'd have a pretty much a fully functional manual SLR style camera uh, that you can carry around with you. But it does uh, very quickly boot up the camera when you want to get into it. So if I'm out at the main menu here uh, and I want to get the camera going, it really doesn't take long for the uh, camera to boot itself up and get ready to take pictures. So uh, really nice experience overall uh, on the photography side for sure. And my only complaint here is with the image stabilization when taking video. As you can see on the right, uh, the LG really bumps around a lot more while walking. I actually put one phone in each hand and walk with them at the exact same time. So this is uh, really the same shot just from two different hands essentially. And uh, the LG was not able to keep the shot as stable as the iPhone could, which was disappointing. Uh, the iPhone is still a much better video camera. Uh, battery life on here is pretty good. I've been uh, whacking the phone around all day while I was getting ready for the review here. So I'm about uh, halfway through my tank on the battery. And I think if you're doing all the the things you're going to be doing with a phone of this class while not plugged in, making phone calls, uh, doing videos and web browsing and everything else, you're probably going to uh, see some uh, battery drain throughout the day. You may, you may squeeze a day out of it, but I think towards the afternoon you might feel like you need to plug it in. Uh, but that's about where I see my iPhone working too. So you know, the more you do with the phone, uh, the brighter the screen is, the more you're going to have to uh, get that battery charged or at least carry a second battery with you that you can swap into the phone while you're using it. Uh, call quality though is decent on here. That's one of the uh, main functions of a phone and it does sound good when you're making phone calls, uh, the, both on the receiving end and the person you're talking to uh, out of the microphone here sounds uh, pretty nicely too. At least I sounded good to them. Uh, the speakerphone is also very good and people that I've talked to on this uh, really can't can't tell the difference if I'm near the phone between the speaker and uh, when I have it in uh, regular handset mode. So they've done a nice job uh, just with the basics on here too, which was nice to see. Uh, it is got its own little Android wrapper, which I, I don't often like because I think Google really knows how to design their interface better than these phone manufacturers do. But I know they want to put their own spin on things. So you get uh, kind of this little smart bulletin thing with the uh, LG apps that they want to uh, put in front of you. But you get some weird UI things. Like you got these gear settings all over the place for different things. So this little gear only adjusts that uh, little smart window up here. If I pull down the settings thing here, I've got a gear up here for one thing. I've got a gear down here for uh, adjusting the sounds. It's just, uh, just settings all over the place. And that's one thing that throws me off with these phones, especially when the manufacturer overlays something on top of Android. Uh, it gets a little confusing to me. Uh, this is running Lollipop, so it is uh, up to par with the latest Android operating system. So uh, from that standpoint, you'll be uh, up to date there. So that is the LG G4, a really nice phone. And I like how uh, every manufacturer is trying to find some different things now to separate themselves in the marketplace with this one it's the camera for sure uh, and it's really really getting to a point of maturity now across uh, just about every smartphone on the market so it's nice to see some innovation now happening uh, within their individual features this is Lon Seipen thanks for watching